Hi there, good morning everybody. Um, I'm Chris Atterwell, I'm CEO of Search Laboratory, uh, and welcome to today's webinar uh, on how to leverage first party data uh, across the Google marketing platform. But very briefly, for those who aren't familiar with Search Laboratory, uh, we're an integrated global digital agency of around 150 people split between uh, our offices in the UK and in the US. Uh, in, in practical terms, that means we support clients at all stages of the online user journey, including SEO, paid media, programmatic display, social media, and digital strategy. And we're able to do that globally by having a team of in-house native linguists. Um, we also provide analytics, consultancy, and support. Um, and as a Google marketing platform sales partner, we're one of a select number of agencies in Europe who sell and service Google's enterprise marketing technology. Um, as part of that partnership, we're pleased today to be joined by Tom Barrow, uh, who is partner platforms, uh, platforms partner manager rather at Google. Uh, and Tom's going to give you an introduction of uh, the Google marketing platform and some insight into why first party data is becoming more important. Uh, we'll then pass over to Pete Whitmarsh, who is head of paid media at Search Laboratory. Uh, and Pete will share some practical examples of how you can leverage your own first party data across the Google tech stack uh, in order to improve performance of your digital marketing campaigns. Uh, generally, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. So the webinar should last about 30 minutes or so. If you do have any questions as we go along, please send these to us via the chat box. Uh, and we'll spend a few minutes at the end of the presentation uh, to answer these. So that's all from me. It's now my pleasure to hand you over to the actual experts. And I'll um, firstly hand you over to Tom to kick things off. Great. Uh, thanks very much, Chris. Um, morning, everyone. Uh, just a quick uh, introduction. My name is Tom Barrow. As Chris mentioned, I'm the platform's partner manager at Google here uh, in UK and, and Ireland. Uh, I've spent about seven years in, in digital marketing, um, spent a couple of years uh, over in Melbourne, uh, which is uh, my hometown, uh, before trading in the, the warm summers for the cold winters of, uh, of London, and this morning obviously being no exception to that one. Um, so I'm going to move quickly into the, into the presentation. I thought it would be a good opportunity uh, for everyone to sort of get a bit of an overview of where we sit uh, within the, the Google's uh, business organization. Uh, so we're split in sort of two main areas, the first being media and uh, the second being tech technology. So if we look firstly at, at the media section, um, and these uh, won't be, won't be new, new names to anyone on, on the webinar today, but obviously our, our core two media properties um, being uh, google.com, um, obviously most people are doing their, their search advertising um, through there, uh, and, and YouTube being the, the second core property. If we look down to the, to the technology side, uh, we have three kind of core um, technology or, or advertising or marketing technology solutions. Um, so bottom left, uh, Google, Google Analytics, um, this is a free tool. Anyone can uh, pop this across, their, pop a piece of code across their website, understand more about how consumers are interacting with their website, um, session quality, or all kinds of different metrics that you can be looking at through, uh, through the, the free tool. The second one in the middle there is, uh, is Google Ads. And uh, traditionally, you, you may all uh, know this as, as AdWords. Um, in around June, July last year, we made that, uh, that branding change uh, into, into Google Ads. And really, the, the way we're, we're looking at Google Ads at the moment is, is opening a door uh, to our core properties. So if, uh, if you are using Google Ads at the moment, you'll have an open door to um, anything within Google.com or, uh, or YouTube.com um, also, as well as some of our display, uh, display properties. So really sort of uh, an entry level solution, but it also has some, some really powerful, powerful tools within, within, that, uh, within that area. The third one and where I sit and spend most of my time is within the Google marketing platforms. So that's uh, bottom right there. Uh, I'll take you through a bit more detail in a second, but really this is um, a suite of uh, enterprise solutions. Um, so the core products within Google marketing platform being Analytics 360, so the enterprise solution of, of Google Analytics, Display and Video 360, which is our de demand side platform, and uh, Search Ads 360 also. So for us, it was uh, an incredibly busy 2018. Uh, one of the, the major things that, uh, or major changes for us over 
over at Google side was bringing together of two of our uh, our biggest brands. Uh, our, one of the brands being DoubleClick, which is traditionally our advertising technology solution, and the second one uh, being Google Analytics 360, obviously um, our analytics Martech um, solution. Bring those two things together um, to create the Google marketing platform. I think there's a few sort of reasons why this is really important. Firstly, is to create some simplicity for our customers. I think we had some feedback. There's a lot of a lot of you know technology jargon in market. And I think this really simplifies it um, for for the market. But secondly, we wanted uh, customers to be able to make the most of um, Google data and the integrations, uh, the great integrations that that can that can work from here, such as the integrations between DV360 and and Analytics, Analytics 360. And uh, Pete, Pete will take you through a bit more detail um, on how you can leverage that a bit later on in the presentation. So firstly, I think it's important to sort of uh, set a landing here that the, the current data and ad tech landscape is at a bit of an inflection point. I think we're at a really, really interesting time um, as an industry. I think uh, on, on the far left there, there's there's more data than, than ever before. If you think about um, how many sort of uh, how many sort of iPhones or uh, you know pixels or you know devices that anyone is using at any one time, um, that has sort of gone through the roof. For advertisers also, there's there's more data than ever before. So we're looking at first party, second party, third party data. Um, I think it's important that we sort of summarize a little bit around what each of those are. So first party is really your own data. So uh, first party that has been collected with full consent of the user um, and is owned by by that brand. And that's what we're gonna be getting to more in, in this presentation is uh, how can we make best use of, of that first party data that you have that you have to hand. The second one there is second party data. So it, it might be some data that you, you have a, a, a with a business partner. So if I'm an auto brand, for example, um, and I wanna work closely with an auto magazine, maybe we might look to share that, uh, share both of our data points for, for mutual benefit. Uh, and the third party, uh, third party data might be um, a third party data supplier that exists to, to bring sort of large data pools um, in, into the market. I think we're seeing increasingly people moving towards that first party data point um, to really uh, make the most out of out of what they have to hand. The second one here is, is around pace of innovation. So um, it's ever changing the, the landscape as, as I'm sure you can uh, you can imagine and would have seen um, a number of sort of VC, uh, lots of VC funding coming into the market for advertising technology um, companies. Um, and really, we're, we're not seeing that any differently at Google side. So from, from our side, there's a lot of innovation around, uh, obviously, machine learning, um, which is available in a lot of our uh, different products, um, and also cloud infrastructure. So we're seeing a, a bit of a um, bringing together, if you like, of, of two pieces of the puzzle, the first being our uh, traditional ad solutions and also our, our cloud solutions. So really leveraging both of these technology solutions to get the most out of, um, out of your data and, and what you're up to day to day. Um, I think Pete's going to take you uh, through how to use things like BigQuery uh, in a bit more detail later on today and some of the, the power that, can, that that can hold. The third one here as well is around industry changes. So it's been a really interesting 20, uh, 2018. Obviously, uh, you'll all be very familiar with GDPR and how that's affected your individual organizations. Um, but that's obviously had a significant effect on, on how users are seeing data and, and obviously data privacy acro across the EU. And I don't think we expect this to change. We'll, we expect things to uh, things to roll out in, in APAC regions and, and obviously the US are thinking about things at, at the moment from their side. One of the biggest questions uh, that I think we get asked uh, at Google is, is how do we succeed at, at data-driven marketing? And it's a really interesting question. There's no like uh, absolute right solution, but hopefully I can give you a, a couple of tips uh, as, to, as to how you can look at this going forward. I think one of the things we've definitely seen, and this is a study that we uh, we did with BCG um, around digital maturity. So how well um, uh, an advertiser is, or how mature an advertiser is uh, across a, a maturity spectrum. Um, we're seeing those advertisers that are that are most mature have seen some some really great revenue increases of as much as around 20%. But also seeing some significant cost savings, um, so things like wasted impressions, uh, wasted advertising, for example, of, of around 30%. So there is some significant benefit to moving across that maturity, uh, uh, or moving up at that maturity spectrum towards uh, towards uh, digital maturity. I think there's uh, around three, you know, three core elements that we see being being really important here. Uh, the first being technology. So. 
Uh, we're a big believer in in uh, a single technology suite, uh, which is why we brought out uh, the the Google Marketing Platform, really making use of all of the integrations that exist and, and making the best use of all the different technology solutions. So, for example, I spoke about the innovations with uh, things like cloud and machine learning. Um, you would need, for example, a, a single technology suite with us to then uh, move move into those more more advanced. Uh, more advanced areas. There's multiple others in market that you can also check out, um, but obviously ask the, the team at Search Labs or, or myself if you, if you want any further information on the on the technology uh, point there. The second one is around data, and I spoke around sort of data maturity and, and how uh, users or, or how advertisers are utilizing their, their first party data. Um, I think this is really important, and, and if you're at the beginner stage, I think, I, I, I would emphasize the point that I think you should really jump in and, and have a look at what data that you have to hand and how you can potentially uh, utilize that better, but also right through to the really uh, mature um, marketers. Um, how can we start using the more advanced features uh, that exist across those technology products? The third one is around people, and I'll um, flick to the next slide for this one. And I think uh, if you look at the bottom uh, part of this slide, Google historically, um, we've looked at sort of a couple of different areas. The first is at heart, we're a technology company. Um, so what we want to be doing is focusing on, on building best in class technology. I think um, historically we've dabbled in, in things like servicing and managed servicing, et cetera. But I think for 2019, um, to give you a bit of insight there, we're really going to be focused um, on building the best in class technology and really um, driving our partners and, and working really closely with our partners um, like, like Search Laboratory um, to, to drive value for our customers. So that value may be in sort of strategic consulting and measurement, um, how you're using the technology. So technology integrations, uh, media management, um, creative services, uh, any of these different topics. Um, so I think the main point here is we're going to be focusing really uh, all of our energies on, on technology while, while uh, working closely with our partners to, to drive the best value for, for customers. I think then I'm going to hand over to, to Pete. Um, he's going to give you some, some examples on how Search Labs have been doing this previously and, and some of the ways that you can use your first party data better going forward. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Tom. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be talking today, as Tom says, about some really some examples of using first party data. So in this world that we're now in where third party data is a little bit more restricted and, and users are certainly more aware of privacy than ever before, um, we need to make the most out of your first party data. So um, firstly, just to talk a bit about audiences. So when we use the term audience, essentially what we're talking about is a pool of cookies. Um, these can be built from online and offline activity. So either one of those or a combination of uh, both of them. Um, and you build those up in analytics and then you actually use them for targeting via online activity. So whether that's display search or website personalization. So um, a lot of these examples kind of talk through the different audiences that you might build up in different scenarios and then how you actually use the um, use those audience to uh, those audiences to get the most out of the media buying. Um, in terms of Google Analytics and Analytics 360, so with basic analytics, you can pass audiences over to Google Ads, which is is great. Um, it gives you a lot of opportunities to then use those for um, display remarketing as well as remarketing lists for search ads. Um, the real power of GA360 comes into the fact that you can not only pass those audiences over to Google Ads, but also into Search Ads 360, Display and Video 360, and even Optimize 360 for um, for the sake of website personalization. So you can actually personalize different elements of the website based on the audiences from analytics. Um, so integrating customer data so in terms of actually getting the offline data into your online portal so into google analytics there's a few different things you can do here so um i'm not going to go into any of these in a massive amount of detail because there's lots of blogs out there we've got a team here who can help out with that but just so you know there's basically these three methods measurement protocol so that's all around kind of having live data um kind of passing from your CRM into Google Analytics. So live up-to-date data of the different users. Um, Google Analytics 360 has a native integration with Salesforce. So that allows you to do a very similar thing, but it's a little bit simpler since the, the native integration exists. Um, and then the third option is data import. So this means manually uploading the data from, um, from 
some kind of offline source, some kind of export, um, and pulling that into analytics so that you've got um, data in there. The main disadvantage of that is that it does need to be done manually, so it's not going to be as fresh as using something like the measurement protocol or the Salesforce link. Um, one of our top tips really would be do this soon. So if you haven't done this yet, it's worth just doing it, even if you don't think there's an immediate need for it, because you want to be at a point where if, if six months from now you realize there is a need for it, you don't want to then have to set it up and then wait for the audiences to build up. It's a really good idea to just do this as soon as possible. So I'm going to talk through a couple of case studies. The first one here is for a fashion website. Um, it's a fashion website that offers free delivery and returns. And as with many sites like this, they're looking to maximize their ROI, um, both from their existing customers, but also by generating new customers and, and really understanding the value of those new customers. Um, so what we've done here is built up a user matrix of different people who visit their site. So you can see each user we're going to classify um, based on what they've done recently, their typical purchasing habits, their average spend, are they buying items on sale or, or not on sale, what percentage of items do they return, um, and do they have the um, this particular business's app installed and what kind of purpose are they using the app for. So the first audience we built up was uh, VIPs. So these are the absolute most valuable users to this particular business. They're people who are buying regularly, spending a lot of money, not returning a huge percentage of items. They've got the app installed. They're making purchases from this. So these are the absolute users we want. We want to make the most out of these and find more people like these. So. A few things that we do with this audience is any new launches, so um, new seasons, we would always promote to these people first. Um, this is the kind of thing you'd be used to doing through email marketing anyway, but by doing this through remarketing, it's kind of another string to that bow and allows you to kind of work alongside your email marketing to make sure you've got a unified message across channels. Um, we'd have a fairly loose frequency cap on these people, so we know that they like us, they like buying from us, so we want to just kind of keep reminding them um, about the website and, and keep getting them back. Um, we'd promote things like the refer a friend scheme to them. So again, these are the absolute cream of the crop. They're the users who'll be singing our praises, um, so we want them to, to recommend their friends. Um, with this particular client that we work with, we actually exclude these users from brand PPC. The reason why we do this um, is that if they're doing a search for our brand uh, on Google anyway, then the brand PPC actually isn't adding much value. They're already familiar with us. They already know they want to buy from us. So there's not any additional value for us in, in bidding on that brand PPC term. Um, and one of the big things that we want to do from these people is create similar audiences. So um, similar audiences is Google's way of finding other people with similar characteristics to that person um, or to that group of people and then allowing you to target them both across search and display. Um, so, yeah, that allows us to hopefully develop the VIPs of the future. The second audience we developed for this client was around lapsed VIPs. So these are people who used to um, be the ones who were buying all the time and spending a load of money, but for whatever reason, they don't anymore. So um, we want to encourage these people back to the website and yeah, get them get them buying from us again. Um, so the few things that we can do with these. So firstly, we might offer some kind of huge one-time discount. So we really want to encourage them back. So we might offer a 50% discount just to just to try and really get them back to the website and get them uh, get them in the habit of buying from us again. Um, if they don't have the app installed or they're not using it very much, then we want to promote the app usage um, to them and, and get them to install it. Um, the reason for that is that this client has measured that um, typically people who use the app spend a little bit more, they buy more frequently, um, and even they just spend more time browsing, uh, browsing the inventory as well. So yeah, trying to get them to use the app is a good way of trying to get them to purchase more. However, for this audience, we would have a fairly tight frequency cap that they are lapsed. They they aren't showing themselves to have a huge amount of value right now. So um, we don't want to spend a load of marketing budget on them, but we do want to just kind of remind them from time to time um, about the website and the services. 
And then the third audience we've built here is people who regularly return products. So since this is a website that offers free delivery and returns, um, the kind of users who aren't spending very much and who are returning um, a really high percentage of products are actually not very valuable and they can actually be loss leading for this business. So um, we basically want to really restrict the marketing budget on these people. If we've identified someone as a regular returner, we really don't want to spend loads of money on them um, so yeah that's that's the action that we would take in that case um, another thing that we we do for this client is all around profiling different users so um, taking data from the app the website and the CRM um, we can feed that into BigQuery and on a live basis, we're basically using machine learning within BigQuery to bucket these users into different values. So um, we can break down the different users into how valuable we think they are for the particular website, um, build those audiences out in Google Analytics 360, and then push those back off to Search Ads 360 and uh, Display and Video 360. So we can actually activate those audiences for the media buying side of things. So this is a really powerful thing to be able to do. So we're constantly moving users between the different buckets and um, analyzing the amount we're spending on the marketing for those different buckets so that we're getting the absolute most out of the most valuable users. Um, another very similar thing that we do is when someone makes their first ever purchase from our website, um, we want to try and predict how valuable that person is. So if someone buys um, a five pound pair of underwear or if they buy a basket with six coats in and 10 tops and um, loads of other products, then we we're going to value them as being much more valuable because they've spent more. However, we want to also use that information to predict what is the long term behavior. So again, cross referencing the data using machine learning um, to understand what the typical users do. So what what happens after that first purchase? We then feed that into Analytics 360 and we actually track an event with that. And the reason for tracking an event is that if someone's just spent five pounds, um, if that is a brand new user, there's actually a lot more implied value than just the five pounds that they've spent because we've acquired that new user. So we track an event um, based on the actual value, the kind of lifetime value implication of the purchase that they've made um, and then feed that back into um, into the media buying tools. Um, and then that allows um, those tools, the um, auto bidding software within those tools to actually re respond to that and react to the fact that whilst it maybe wasn't a particularly big purchase, it was a new user, therefore we're gonna weight that much higher and um, bid to, to try and get far more activity like that. Um, so my second case study is for a lead generation website. So this is a site with a typical sales cycle between one and three months. So it takes a little bit of time before people actually go on to become a customer. Um, and yeah, they're looking to looking to acquire new customers. So what we've done here is mapped out what is the sort of typical sales cycle that someone would go through. So they've visited the website. Have they just left the website or have they actually filled out a form or, or phone? up the business um, if they've filled out the form were those details real did they then speak to sales have sales determined whether they were qualified or unqualified have we then sent a proposal and then have we won or lost that business at the end of the day um, so when a lot of people think of remarketing this is the kind of thing they think about so if you just look at the highlighted boxes here this is kind of representing the the user journey and and the particular audience that we're building here so a lot of people think of remarketing as right someone's been to the website they've not filled out a form therefore we'll remarket to them and, and try and get them back to the website and that's valuable that's definitely worth doing um, you can also overlay things like how recently they were on the website to understand a little bit more about the potential value and how in market they are right now but there's there's loads more we can do than just that so we can also look at well if they've filled out a form and left fake details um what do we want to do with those people you might think well they're fake details we don't want to spend any more money but actually in a lot of cases if someone's gone as far as filling out some fake details they are probably pretty interested in the business and it's definitely worth trying to attract them back to the website via either display remarketing or rlsa or even some kind of website personalization to try and encourage them to um fill out the form but maybe make it a 
lower friction or a higher reward for, um, for filling out that form. So we encourage them to give the real details. Um, if they have left real, real details and then spoken to the sales team, or if they phoned up and spoke to the sales team, but unfortunately the sales team determined they were an unqualified lead, so they either didn't have the budget, they weren't the right kind of um, weren't the right kind of customer for your business, whatever it is you, that you're looking to do. Um, if they're an unqualified lead, then we want to stop spending money on them. We know that they're not going to be valuable to our business. So we would then create an audience of these people and exclude these from all further marketing activity. Um, if they are a qualified lead and we've sent over a proposal, then we want to still keep nurturing these people we want to make sure that we actually keep showcasing our credentials any award wins latest case studies anything like that to try and push them over the line and, and really try and get them to engage with the business um, again this is a lot like email lifecycle marketing it's exactly the same kind of logic but it's kind of allowing you to have more touch points with those people and sing a consistent message across different channels um, if you win the business, then you might want to add them to your negative targeting so you don't spend any more money on them. If there's cross-sell opportunities within the business, then you might actually want to start then trying to cross-sell to different products from this point as well. Um, if you lost the business, um, then what do you do at that point? Well, maybe it's because they've signed up with a competitor. Maybe your competitors typically have annual contracts, for example. So you might want to then start targeting them after 10 months as they're coming up to contract renewal time to try and get them to engage with your business again in the future. Um, so yeah, there's there's all sorts of different things that we can do with this. As you can see, this is far more than just remarketing. Um, there's a lot of different things that we're doing throughout this. One really important bit of advice as well is to show different creatives throughout this cycle. So people could be seeing different um, banner adverts throughout this entire cycle. We want to make sure that, yeah, depending on how far down the line they are, that they are actually seeing a different creative as well. Um, the final thing that I was just going to touch on was around gathering more first party data. So if you don't have enough data, there are limitations in terms of the sizes of the audiences that you need. Um, if you don't have enough data, then there's various ways that you can try and acquire more data as well. So if uh, your business is doing events, if you're doing flyers that are activated online, any kind of competitions, whether they're kind of online social media competitions or offline competitions, all of those can be ways to collect additional first party data and kind of add that to your marketing pool and make sure you've got specific ways of targeting those audiences and specific ways of trying to kind of push them down the funnel so um yeah things like this a lot of kind of traditional marketing is actually really good for driving more first party data which then allows for more activation of the online marketing so that's everything i wanted to go through just in summary um the Google marketing platform is a great tool to help us to, to really understand and leverage customer data. Um, we are in a world now where third party data is a bit more restricted than it ever has been in the past. Um, so first party data is, is more important than ever. Um, using a unified technology solution makes this as easy as it possibly can be. So within um, the Google Marketing Platform, there's something called the Integration Center, which allows us to just very quickly tie different products together um, and really make sure that we're kind of connecting these audiences across all of the different platforms. Um, and then, yeah, I've talked you through all sorts of examples there of how you can create and develop your audiences and really use that to get the very most out of them um, and really market to them in the right way. So that is everything for today's presentation. Um, please feel free to ask any questions. I'll hand over back to Chris now. Yeah, thanks for that, Pete, and uh, and thanks also, Tom. We we do have a few questions that have been sent through. If if there are any more, then feel free to send them through, and we'll address them. Otherwise, uh, we can catch up with you directly afterwards. Um, th there were a couple of questions I had to kick things off. One was um, in relation to standard analytics. So, how much of this can I achieve without upgrading to Analytics 360? Um, I'm not sure if that's for either Pete or Tom or, or both, actually. Should, yeah, should should I start? Um... 
yeah, I, I think I think a lot of a lot of things can be achieved with the uh, with the the standard an analytics um, without without upgrading. I think there are, and I, I definitely encourage everyone to at, at least make some of the initial integrations with Google Ads, uh, or or create some of those integrations with Google Ads. What what analytics won't allow you to do is integrate directly with um, the enterprise solutions, so such as DV360, SA360, um, and I think there's also some restrictions in terms of um, in terms of how many sort of custom dimensions, etc., um, that you can have within there. So there are some restrictions, but I would still uh, there are still some things that you can still do with uh, with analytics, and I'd recommend starting with those definitely as, as as a first step. I don't know if you want to add to that, Pete, maybe. Um, yeah, to be honest, I think you've pretty much covered everything there. I guess the only other thing I'd mention was also the integration with BigQuery, which um, then allows for the kind of live analysis of the customers. So actually, yeah, pushing through to there, and then you can even utilize the machine learning technology within BigQuery to to really properly understand the data and um, build up the different audiences from that. I, I guess just, just to finish and add to that one, I think the what what we're talking about as as far as a solution with Google Marketing Platform is um, it, it's an it's driven by audiences, the ability to share audiences across platforms and leverage audiences across platforms, and and in the world of Google Marketing Platform, where it's the uh, the enterprise version of the the technology, you know, tools like Display and Video 360 offer much more capability um, around uh, you know targeting. And, and the ability to share audiences natively with those enterprise solutions just really puts you on another level as far as your, your marketing activity. The, the audiences themselves, as Tom uh, touched on, you, know, you, you are limited in standard analytics as the number of audiences you can create, first of all. And secondly, the quality of those audiences by, by way of those custom dimensions and metrics, which Tom touched on. So um, yes, a lot of stuff can be achieved in standards. Um, for people really wanting to, to, to get ahead of the competition, um, you know, investment in the premium tool is is the way to go. I'd say. Um, th thanks for that. One 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 final question, just to touch on those audience limits, Pete. I think you you, you touched on the fact that um, there were audience uh, minimum numbers that you'd need to activate some of these campaigns. So there's a question here that says we we have a limited number of people in our funnel. Uh, what what are we able to do and not able to do? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Unfortunately, they, for privacy reasons, there do always need to be restrictions on how many users you need to actually have an audience that you're allowed to then activate. So, um, across Google Ads, there's typically a minimum of a hundred users that you need for display advertising, but a thousand users for search advertising. Um, with Display and Video 360, you're also looking at a thousand users in there. Different DSPs as well do have different restrictions, but there's always going to be some kind of restriction in place. Um, so yeah, my advice would be if if your audience pool isn't that big, there's still various things you can do here, um, and it's still always worth kind of building those audiences. And even if they're not quite big enough yet, it's still worth creating them, and then eventually they will become big enough, and you will be able to start activating them at that point. But yeah, a lot of the stuff that we've spoken about, certainly the stuff further up the funnel, um, is still absolutely stuff that you should be able to do. Um, but yeah, it, I suppose if you are a large business with a larger audience pool then it does just unlock a few more opportunities further down the funnel when you might be looking at um, a smaller percentage of users who actually make it to that point okay perfect thanks for that Pete um, well that's that's everything if uh, if that's alright with everybody if there aren't any further questions we'll um, we'll say goodbye for the day we will send out a recording of the webinar afterwards if you'd like to um, to take another look or share it with any colleagues. If you do have any other questions, then obviously feel free to get in touch. Um, here's some contact details. Uh, it would be great to chat. We'd love to answer more questions on Google Marketing Platform and first party data. Um, and yeah, we'll leave it there. Have a great day, everybody, and thanks for joining.